the later Middle Ages, the impact of the bubonic plague. The Black Death was a plague that wiped out more than one third of the European population during the Middle Ages. What was the plague and how did it spread through medieval Europe? Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Sounds familiar, right? It's a simple nursery rhyme chanted on countless schoolyards across the country. But according to some historians, Ring Around the Rosie has a darker origin, one that dates all the way back to the Middle Ages. In the middle of the 14th century, an epidemic of disease swept through Europe that killed, proportionately, more people than any known disease or war up to that time. This epidemic is known as the Black Death. It was caused by a disease called the plague, and it drove medieval society into panic and despair. Plague comes in several forms, but the best known type is called bubonic plague, named for swellings on its victims' bodies called buboes. People infected with the disease developed a round red rash on their skin, a ring around the rosy. The rash was followed by severe sickness, and often in a matter of hours, almost certain death. The plague has been around for a very long time. Scientists say it may have origins in ancient Egypt. Researchers have unearthed plague-carrying organisms in the village of the workers who built King Tutankhamun's tomb. An ancient text tell of an epidemic disease with plague-like symptoms. The medieval plague epidemic was caused by a bacterium that was carried by rats and spread by the fleas that lived on them. The Black Death started in Asia in the early to mid-1300s. It killed some 13 million people in China before following trade routes into the Middle East. Trade ships unknowingly carried plague-infested rats through the Black Sea and then on to Italian port cities such as Venice and Genoa. From there, the plague swept northward and by 1350 had ravaged Spain, France, Austria, Hungary, Germany, England, and Scandinavia. By the time it ended, the plague had killed some 25 million people in Europe, as much as one-third of the population. In Europe's crowded, dirty cities, there was no way to control the rat population and no knowledge that these rats were spreading disease. Plague killed so many people so quickly that victims were buried without ceremonies in mass graves. People were helpless. There were no treatments and no known way to protect from infection, and virtually no one was immune. Kings and queens, bishops and monks, serfs and peasants, all were touched by the plague. The disease had a profound impact on European society. There were so many deaths that for a short time at least, wars could not be fought, trade slumped, and land was left uncultivated. It took more than a century and a half for the population to recover completely. The bubonic plague of the Middle Ages is one of history's most deadly epidemics, but it is certainly not the only one. Until it was officially eradicated in 1980, smallpox killed at least one third of the people it struck. When Europeans first came to the Americas in the 1500s, the smallpox they carried devastated Native American populations, wiping out entire groups. In 1919, an epidemic of influenza flu killed at least 20 million people, many more than the number killed during World War I, which had ended the year before. Since 1981, a modern epidemic called AIDS has killed more than 20 million people worldwide, and currently the virus that causes it infects about 38 million more. Nearly two-thirds of the people who carry the AIDS virus live in Africa. But while AIDS continues to take a devastating toll, new treatments and massive public health measures have helped to bring relief to victims and to slow the spread of the disease. And the bubonic plague? Well, it still exists today. There was a small outbreak in Madagascar in the 1990s, but thanks to advances in medicines and public health, it should never again become an epidemic. And perhaps one day, 
It'll be nothing more than a reference in a nursery rhyme.